Uh, good morning, everyone. What a pleasure to see all of you enjoying yourselves. My goodness, some of these government officers can dance. And Lizelle, what a beautiful voice you have. Uh, we did realize you weren't muted all the time, and we heard you sing beautifully along there. Somebody uh, else. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> Absolutely wonderful to have you all here. The people are pouring into the room here, so I almost feel like having another song. Uh, but, I, but I'm tempted to, but I think what we're going to do, there are so much time pressures on all of us nowadays that I think that we just need to go straight into it. You're all here today um, at, for something really, really special. Um, I think one of the things that, that very few of us realize is how many people are affected by blindness, first of all, and the stats that I've got is about 1.4 million people are blind in this country. But what's even more important, that probably five times that number are people with low vision. And this is really a service which is extremely limited and something that has been neglected for a while. And I know Nizelle's heart and that of the heart of the Cape Town Society for the Blind for a long time has been to see if they can offer something in terms of, of low vision. And through much hard work and some huge generosity of some people, we've managed to get that right. And today, we are here for that celebration, and that celebration specifically. Um, what happens, I'm going to just guide you through the process. We've got some wonderful speakers. Uh, we've got a lovely tour of the clinic. We're going to show you some things that are happening. One of the things I'm going to suggest is that while the meeting is actually carrying on, is that you switch your cameras off. We're showing a lot of video content. And if it's wobbling, it's not because it's from our side. It's because the internet struggles to show your camera and the video at the same time. So may I suggest that you just take this moment now to just switch off your videos. It's at the bottom left-hand corner, unless you're using a tablet or a phone. Just switch your video off. And then what happens is that you can see everything that's going on and it should be a little bit better and improve your internet speed as well. There's one person who's been driving this organization for a while, and I have been fortunate to meet her, and not only meet her, but call her my friend. Uh, the incredible result of that has done so much uh, for the society in the last couple of years. And I'm, I'm a Rotarian, and she's a Rotarian, and she is one of those people who can get things done that nobody else thinks is possible. Um, she's got such a sweet face. She puts on that red lipstick, and before you know it, your wallet is open and the money is just pouring out. Um, but we all love her to death, but she's a goer, she's a, she's a go-getter, and she's one of those people who make things happen. And I'd like to ask if, Lizelle, if you could just come on now, just tell us a little bit about the project background, how did it actually get off the ground? So ladies and gentlemen, a virtual welcome to Lizelle Devet. Good morning to all our distinctive guests, and I want to say with that also, all protocols observed. Um, thank you, MC Andre, for a beautiful um, introduction. You always make me blush. <laughs> um, October is Eye Care Awareness Month, and we could not have chosen a more appropriate time to open our low vision clinic than right now. I want to start off by sharing with you how this all came about, because it's actually a beautiful story. A couple of years ago, I was privileged to meet one of my role models in business, Mr. Yanni Maton. His book, um, and then they fired me, inspired me to such an extent that I made it a personal goal to meet him in person. So with great trepidation, I wrote to him with a kind request to have a somewhat out of the ordinary 30 minute discussion with him. And three days later, his personal assistant called back and, he said, and she said, Mr. Maton will gladly meet with you. Well, I was, I was super excited, but I was also very, very nervous driving there um, to meet him in Stellenbosch. On arrival, I was led to this massive boardroom and I was asked to wait for him. My heart was absolutely thumping in my chest. And then he stepped into the boardroom, very casually dressed. A baie gemakkelijke mens eindelijk om mee te communikeer. And he offered me his greeting hand. And he went and sat down at the head of the table. He crossed one leg over the other and said, firstly, can we speak Afrikaans? So for the Afrikaans and Macy, was dit so wonderlijk gewees dat ek nie... Um, of the stress where he found that I met him with English. So that was for me very aangenaam. 
And secondly, would you like a coffee? And I responded, yes, thank you, sir. And then he continued and he said, thirdly, please stop calling me, sir. Uh, fourthly, um, I already read everything about Cape Town Society for the Blind. So tell me about yourself. Where did you grow up? Where did you go to school? What did you study? Where did you study? Are you married? Do you have children? How did you end up at CTSB? Tell me why you are doing what you're doing, everything. Because I can only understand somebody in business when I know who he or she really is and what their passion is. And lastly, call me Yanni. Well, um, was I taken aback? So we started talking and sharing information back and forth. I got to know this gentle giant, a hardcore businessman with a very soft heart and passion for people with disabilities. As this conversation drew to a close, he suddenly changed the subject and he looked me straight in the eye and said, so aren't you going to ask me for money? For a moment, I was absolutely shocked to my roots and my honest response was, no, sir, I came here to learn from you. But now that you've asked the question, may I ask you more of your time? And I invited him to share his powerful story of resilience with our students at our annual graduation ceremony. Our students lost their physical sight and I asked him to please come and inspire them with his visionary story of hope. Because I believe it's not what you've lost, but what you have left that counts. When I left two hours later, my heart was bouncing with joy because Yanni Matan said yes, he would be coming to talk to our students at the annual graduation ceremony. When I arrived back to the office, um, his first spontaneous contribution was already waiting for us via a short emailed message in Afrikaans. But I will say it in English so that everybody can follow it. He said, it was so nice meeting with you. I know you didn't ask for money, but please accept a small gift from us and I hope it will make a difference. This was a very special moment in my career. Sorry, I have a lump in my throat. <laughs> As this was the beginning of a beautiful journey of friendship and partnership with him and PSG. We now have an annual Yanni Matan Top Student Award <clears throat> that is treasured by our students. I'll be okay just now. And today, two years later, it is the opening of our own low vision clinic, named after him. Janne, ik weet zo dat jij vandaag hier bij ons kan wees. Ons waardeer jou oneindig. Jij, jouw dierbare vrouw, dierdrij, jouw kinders, Jan, Piet en Charity, en jullie hele span bij Janne met ons stichting en PSG, het ons al so geblees. En Kaapstad Vereniging Verblinde sal jy eeuwig dankbaar wees for your friendship and vertrouwen in our gestel. We value your oprechte belangstelling and belegging in ons. Right. <clears throat> One question you raised that formed part of that first unforgettable conversation was, when I mentioned the alarming statistics that 80% of blindness could be prevented and that people living with low vision still don't receive the necessary attention because of lack of enough well-trained people, facilities and the obvious related cost thereof. The conversation then went into a somewhat different direction. Typically, the visionary that he is, he pertinently asked me whether we were planning to do something about it. And while driving back, it made me think long and hard here was CTSB, then almost 90 years old, and still missing a very important link 
to render holistic services to our visually impaired clients. After doing some research and discussions with our rehab team and experts in the field, we realized that we had to do something about this. Although a few other organizations are rendering low vision support and care, we are a campus where we could offer a one-stop shop service to the hundreds of students and clients frequenting our establishment yearly. But it comes at a cost and it's a huge cost. And we would never have been able to achieve this goal without the partnerships that we have established and maintained over years. And Judith will thank all our donors later. The prevalence of vision impairment in South Africa is the highest of all disabilities, about 32%. It is estimated that 90% of all blind and partially sighted people in the country are unemployed. It breaks my heart. A shocking statistic is that over 90% of people who lose their sight in their youth won't work for more than six months in their entire lives. Exactly a year ago, I was fortunate to meet with the National Minister of Social Development, Ndiwe Zulu, who spontaneously visited us during Eye Care Awareness Month. Our conversations about the high unemployment statistics led to her sincere interest shown in our endeavors to establish a low vision clinic. And she opened the door for us to receiving substantial funding from the National Development Agency towards this project. Thank you, Minister Zulu and the CEO of the NDA, Tamo Mzobi for recognizing this huge need and partnering with us. It is generally accepted that for every blind person, there are four people living with low vision. In South Africa, the reported statistics are 1.4 million blind people, meaning that over 5 million people are living with low vision. There is little access to low vision assessment services for scholars with low vision. And this leads to learners being placed in schools for the blind and sometimes even mainstream schools that are often not adequately equipped to cater for low vision students who have distinctly different requirements from blind students. And this unfortunately results in low vision youths being ill prepared to face the world of employment. I believe that utilizing this clinic would ultimately significantly improve the employability of thousands of South Africans suffering from low vision. Many of our students need help and can only receive these services from optometrists, which they cannot afford. With timely low vision intervention, assessment and rehabilitation, we are planning to equip the low vision students to cope and excel in a sighted world. And the good news is that Correct low vision care will mitigate or alleviate the effects of low vision and can arrest the slide into premature blindness. And that brings me to the questions coming from many people. What is low vision, et cetera? Will it, will it help to go for care? So in short, low vision is a condition caused by eye disease in which visual acuity is 2070 or poorer in the better seeing eye and cannot be corrected or improved with regular eyeglasses. Most eye care professionals prefer to use the term low vision to describe the permanently reduced vision that cannot be corrected with regular spectacles or contact lenses or medication or surgery. Some low vision problems include partial sight, blurred vision, blind spots, night halos, tunnel vision, or partial blindness. In some cases, these issues can be helped uh, by means of specs and contact lenses, or laser eye surgery, or even various medications. But unfortunately, those who cannot be helped are referred to as a person living with low vision. Being classified as low vision 
is a difficult path to be on as it ranges from light to severe impairment. And each case is different and requires subjective intervention and care. Under the leadership of Sandra Dreyer, we are, uh, who's running and managing our training section, we have an established well-trained rehab team who knows how to assess clients and the assistive devices available. Eye tests will be done by our optometrist, Suna Karsten, who will also be responsible for referrals to hospitals and clinics when necessary. Full assessments will be done by our occupational therapist, our orientation and mobility instructor, and our social worker. The importance of access to appropriate assistive devices cannot be overemphasized, as this means not having to lose one's job and being able to continue doing house chores and enjoying one's hobbies. With the assistance of our donors, we managed to purchase all the equipment needed for the clinic. A big thank you to Judith, my 2IC, who project managed these processes for us. I also have to mention a very, a very important link in our network chain. Frederick Janssen, one of the most compassionate and passionate about low vision optometrists I've met. Not only did Frederick spend weeks to assist us with identifying the specific equipment needed to set up the clinic and sharing his experience in the intricate field of low vision, he also connected us with the Margot Picard Trust via his Rotary Club in Malkbos. And they donated a brand new auto refractor machine for the clinic, which is used to measure a person's refractive error and prescription for eyeglasses or contact lenses. With Frederick and Suna's excellent guidance, we also purchased equipment such as a ferropter, tonometer, lensometer, a retinoscope, and a direct ophthalmoscope. Ophthalmoscope. These words are hectic for me, who's not a medical person, but I'm trying my best. And a vast array of assistive devices. Our low vision services will be rendered at no cost to our students, our small business unit owners, and our staff members, as well as to our clients who cannot financially afford it. Those who cannot, who can afford it, will also be welcome at an affordable cost. We endeavor to establish and maintain very good relationships with hospitals, clinics, eye care practic practitioners, and organizations who are willing to share their expertise and knowledge with us. Now, no new idea stops here, stop, stops just there. Phase one has now come to fruition. Funding was received to establish and implement services of phase one, which totaled to 2 million rand. Our biggest donor was the Yanni Maton Foundation and secondly, the NDA. The completion of all three phases of this facility will cost approximately 3.5 million rand. So where to from here? What will the next phase entail? We identified a need from parents with children living with low vision and vision lost. Currently, we do not have the expertise to assist him. We are in the process of talking to several specialists in this field who are prepared to assist with the training in future. And one of them is my fellow Rotarian, Marianne Koy, who is also in our Zoom room today, who is a retired low vision specialist with a passion for children. She's from the Netherlands and came to visit us a couple of times. Marianne created so much interest in this field that we could no longer ignore her outcry for helping children in rural areas. And that brings us to the phase where we will include a specialized section on working with children and setting up a sensory room where they will be able to explore and receive counseling and rehabilitation together with their parents in a safe environment. But this again costs money. Talking to my fellow Rotarian friends from across the world, and I just 
also saw my beautiful German friends in the room, huge interest was shown in the two next phases, which are then the sensory room for children and also taking the services to rural areas by means of a mobile clinic. But right now, first things first, with a focus is on growing the current low vision services to those who need it the most. This truly is a red letter day in the history of CTSB. And I'm extremely grateful that it forms part of my career journey at this formidable organization. Thank you, Andre. I think a symbolic hand clap from myself and I'm sure every single other person in this room is echoing that Lizelle, for someone who teaches speech, it was one of the best speeches I have heard this year. And one of the things that Terry will tell you is that I always say the words, vulnerability is strength. Is when you see your heart, when you cry when you see poor people, when you cry when you see people who can't see. And I think Thomas, she's nodding her head there. That's why you're the right person for the job. So I just want to say big ups to you. Fantastic. Well done. And congratulations. And I'm so glad you've eventually managed to get this off the ground. But speaking about someone who's passionate, uh, the, the wheels of government are turning. I think for people need to hear the words of the NDA as one of the main contributors here. And we originally had Lindy with Zula, and she desperately wanted to be here. Then she mm. gave us the deputy, but the reality is the wheels of parliament do not stop. They are continuously going. I have trained and I speak to many economists. When I speak to economists, I say, how do you fix the future? And they say, you've got to eradicate poverty. From when did the economists mm. start speaking like this? And I think the next lady is the absolutely perfect person for this morning. She's the chief executive officer for the National Development Agency, and she is invested in the policy of poverty eradication and champions these causes for everybody else. She is a very powerful woman. And let me tell you, I've just looked at, and I don't know if you know, Tommy, but I've just booked you for a radio interview on Smile Radio, because I look for those inspirational people who are making a, a massive difference. Um, she's really come to light after the August 18 presidential dinner where she spoke about elevating women, which is one of her real big passions. And as recently as 20th of May this year, uh, she was presenting at, at Her Excellency Dr. Joyce Bunder's 70th birthday, another inspirational woman, about enhancing productivity levels in women, and especially from those people from rural and remote areas. Tama, you've got an incredible CV. You have done so much for this country already, and I think you've been rewarded, and I still see big things ahead for you. So we are privileged this morning to see you here and we look forward to your words of wisdom. Um, thank you very much, uh, Program Director Andre, that such a warm, humbling welcome. Uh, I'm still emotional. I'm, I'm still trying to put myself together. You know, there's one thing that our icon, uh, President Mandela once said to say, it always seems impossible until it's done. And I think right now that's how uh, Lizelle is feeling uh, to say, yes, it was a, a dream, but it is a dream now that is beginning to bear fruit. Uh, a warm greetings to the Chief Executive Officer, Ms. Lizelle van de Wett. Uh, the warm greetings to Jenny Moten Foundation. Uh, I'm, I'm inspired, I've heard already good news out of the presentation and the background of the entire program. I don't want to say this is a project. It's a program that even government needs to emulate and replicate in other provinces because it's such a wonderful work that you have done. It couldn't have been achieved without the Jenny Martin Foundation and other donors uh, from abroad and locally. The civil society organizations that are here with us today, various leadership that have joined us in this platform this morning, clients who continue to benefit from the services that is rendered by the, the Cape Town Society for Blind Low Vision Clinic. And a very blessed good morning to our media gurus, our friends, our partners who continue uh, to share the news, who continue to spread education, to educate, to entertainment, to, to, to keep us posted on the issues that are happening in our country and beyond. Uh, with those few words, I want to greet everyone, protocol observed, 
And I want to greet in absence our minister and deputy minister who was so willing to come and participate to this groundbreaking in a innovative initiative. I say it's groundbreaking because from the department side, it has never been funded from the Department of Social Development or the National Development Agency. So it's the first of its kind. I'm honored to be part of this initiative. And uh, me personally, I'm so close to the people, vulnerable people in the main. And uh, uh, when I heard that this was a call by the minister having had a discussion where she met with the Lizelle, I thought we couldn't have done it better than to prioritize that we see to finish that this thing gets off the ground. So for me, the improvement of the quality of the life for blind and visually impaired persons really is very close to my heart. Uh, with those few words, I just wanna take you briefly to the mandate, what NDA is all about, what NDA does. And um, in a very, very short brief, uh, I want to take a moment to, um, uh, to convey a, a humble apology. Like I've said, we have portfolio committee today, which is parliament, it's taking place virtually. So unfortunately the minister and the deputy minister could not be excused. And the minister was excused because she had to uh, attend a special cabinet meeting because it's Wednesday today. I hope their apology is accepted. I'm humbled to share that the National Development Agency is an agency of government, not just for social development. Any government department that has funds that they need to conduit to communities, civil society in the main, they look up to NDA to do due, due diligence processes to ensure that it is existent, it is a, leg, a legitimate organization, it's well run, then we come in and we partner and we'll make a massive investment in making sure that we change people's lives. This is our key mandate. The second, the second mandate is that of doing research, main, the action research. What is it that is happening in our community? How best can we assist in eradication of poverty? How best we can achieve in changing lives of our communities? I think, Andrew, you said it nicely when you say our civil society should be leading by example. We, we're not here just to earn salary. We're here to serve. And the best way to serve is rewarded through such good work that is launched today. In discharging our mandate as NDA, that of contributing funds, that of con, uh, contributing to eradication of poverty, that of capacitating the civil society on management, on bookkeeping, on how to run an organization, and I must say, from the bottom of my heart, it was the easiest way to partner with the Cape Town Society for the Blind Low Vision because you already had systems in place. And according to the public PES, according to the Public Finance Management Act, we have to be responsible for the funds that we give out as grants. We have to account because it's public funds. And I'm so happy and I'm so thrilled because this is the testimony of the wealth spent money, public money. And really from the bottom of my heart, and I think it, that would be, that would have been the words of the minister, that would have been the words of the deputy minister to say, come, that, that invitation from the CEO, Ms. Lizelle, it's, 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 it's enhancing confidence that indeed the funds that you were granted were utilized for the purpose that they were meant for. We are happy to say today, well done and congratulations in the investment that we have made of, of just over uh, half a million, which is five, five, uh, it's 558,748 that we grant funded to this society because of their good work. We know that there's shortage of low vision assessment services in Cape Town and this funding will strengthen the capacity of the staff through training, procurement of assistive sens sensory and visual devices, including playing and learning equipment. And these will be used for specialized blindness interventions, therapies. I want to congratulate the CTSB, which is the Cape Town Society for the Blind, for really coming on board in raising 
you know, when, when, when you ask for something and you show cause that you are serious about what you are asking for, they managed to raise 50%, which is a match of what we have invested as NDA. And really, I know that it's a struggle to look around, there's fatigue and resources. Now it has been exacerbated by the pandemic of COVID-19, but you were able to raise 50% from various donors who had better, best interest at heart of the cause that you are championing. And uh, in raising this, we don't take it for granted as government because we know that it was for the good cause. And it is this partnership of this 50% of your, on your part and the 50% on the NDA's part that indeed have seen the dream of opening this low vision clinic being realized. This is good work. This is good work that we know that you are providing training already and you're offering skills. But what resonates with me more uh, aligning with what we are faced as a country, the issue of unemployment, the issue of job losses. But I've heard and I've observed that in your programs, in your skills development program, you do link students to sustainable jobs and job creation opportunities. And I think we need to applaud you for that. And I'm sure it's a story that minister will want to share with the president because president is looking forward for this in innovation. He's looking forward for these ideas that will champion and take South Africa forward. In the main, we will continue to provide our legislation in terms of reviewing with your assistance because you're on the receiving side. I must take and I must concede that as government, as much as we are successful in our legislation, we have not yet covered the ground when it comes to the legislation for the disabled people, for the disability sector. In the main, that caters for access to basic services. And we remain humble and appreciative of the bold steps that the, as, that the, 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 the center in terms of the Cape Town Society for the Blind, led by Lizelle and the team that we have managed to open and establish and launch the Low Vision Clinic in Cape Town. We remain humble and encourage again that the expenditure that we have, uh, 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 have been provided to do the work, indeed, it has gone to where it was supposed to go. I don't want to dwell much on the statistics. However, these statistics are shocking and they continue to shock until one of us can stand up and say, enough is enough. As a country, our legislation, we're supposed to have been contributing 7% of our budget to cater for the needs of the disability sector. However, we are struggling at the 2%. Some of the government departments have not even reached 1%. We hang our head in shame because we could have done better post 25 years of democracy. But I want to commit that we continue and strive as a national development agency in providing our grants, in making sure that at least 3% where we are seated at, where our partnership and grant funding has been channeled to the centers like the Cape Town uh, Society for the Blind Low Vision Clinic. According to International Agency for the Prevention of Blindness, 285 million worldwide live with low vision and blindness. And of these, 39 million are blind and 46 million people have moderate or severe visual impairment. And you always think it's far-fetched until it hits you at your family, it hits you at your friends, it hits you with immediate relatives that you never thought it would hit into. I think Lizelle did touch on the 90% uh, that live in low, low income in terms of countries where they don't get any support of such, let alone within South Africa where other countries in the continent, they look at us as a developing country, yet we haven't done much in terms of meeting the needs of the sector within which we are focusing. Sadly, 80% of visual impairment is avoidable. It's treatable, it's preventable. Why I say sadly, it's because if uh, we as government are paying attention 
and directing our investment in terms of programs, we would be doing much better in saving these numbers in terms of the percentage, which is 80%. We're looking forward to partner. We're looking forward to, to, to visit. We're looking forward to emulate the good work that we're doing as Cape Town Society for the Blind so that we can have some structures like this in other provinces, in the main, the rural provinces. Uh, naturally, when you talk about Cape Town, people think of Cape Camps Bay, they think of the big ocean, they think of the beautiful things, not alone, not, not to be in the know of the silent issues that are, you're struggling with. And we are happy because we've taken a leadership. And I can tell you right now, if a woman is in leadership, things happen. We can multitask, we can be trusted. You give women a seed, you get vegetables. You give women a grocery, you get a meal. So it is in these few words that I wish to encourage you. I want to congratulate you. But before I conclude, I'm reminded that today or this, this month, uh, CTSB uh, is celebrating the 91 anniversary providing service without any support at some stage, with support in some stages. But here we are, we we'll partner with you, we'll journey together, we'll ensure that we'll turn the tide of poverty, we'll ensure that we'll turn the tide of fighting the scourge of low vision and all other impairments that are related to the services that you render. With those few words, God bless you, wishing you all, all the best as you proceed to change the lives of our communities. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Tama Mzorbi, and I think if you need to remember that name, Tama Mzorbi, is obviously someone who cares deeply about what she does. She's not just there, and I can see the servant-hearted leadership that you displayed with Thomas. So for me, it's a great privilege to have had you here. I was asked the other day how I can remain optimistic in this country when so many things are happening. And the reality is, as part of the media, one of the privileges that I have is to meet many people like Tom who are doing huge things to change. So don't let the vociferous minority confuse you there are so many people working their hearts out to make this yeah. place a better place. So Tommy, for, for you, for the role that you play and for your generosity on part of the NDA to make this project a reality, we just want to say a huge big thank you to all of you. When we started doing the planning with this, uh, for, with Judith and Lizelle and myself, uh, we very quickly realized there were just too many things that we had to do. We wanted to do the cutting of the ribbon ceremony. We wanted to have the Mutan Foundation to, to be here we wanted our, our other donors from around the world to be part of the, the function. But the reality is we're living in a world of COVID and it was exceptionally difficult. And so we took the huge decision to do this function online. And I'm actually glad, Lizelle and Judith, that we've actually done this because it's allowed us the opportunity to have people like Tom in here and to have all the amazing guests that are sitting in this room. But to, to us, we can still have that experience what we've done is we've created a series of videos. So what we're going to be doing now, and I must apologize in advance, this has literally been done in the last few days as we've been putting this meeting together. For those of you that are watching that are blind or, or, or have low vision, uh, we haven't done a voiceover. That is still happening. It's still coming. So please be patient with us. The video is not very long. It's about seven or eight minutes long. But I'm just going to describe to you what is. There is some talking between uh, Suna and you, some of the people and from Pierre Duplessis from the Yanni Mouton Foundation, but where there is silence. What we're looking at, first of all, is the cutting of the ribbon. So we're just doing it there. And again, you'll see the, the Yanni Mouton uh, sign is, is just done in ink because this was literally filmed a few days ago. It has now been replaced with the most magnificent sign uh, just to, to express our, our thanks to the Yanni Mouton Foundation. You will see the actual room is outstanding with some amazing equipment inside there. And not only will soon be telling us a little bit about what's happening there, but we're also going to do a little one or two tests uh, on people to show you some of the facilities and things that we have available. As I say to you, this is just the beginning. Uh, and so we are so excited. And I, I love it when I see all those shiny new toys like Lizelle. I can't pronounce most of them. Um, but all I know is that there are tens of thousands of people in this city who are going to benefit from this, this clinic. And to all of you, I say thank you. So again, if you can leave your cameras off for a few minutes um, so that you can get the maximum reception, 
And Terry, if I can ask you, if you can just please play the video. Ook groot waarderingshuis so baie graag hier wou wees, saam met die ondersteuning van ons trustees, jylle wil ons baie geluk sê met die opening van die nieuwe centrum, met die goeie werk wat jylle doen, en namens die stichting wil ons graag vir jylle die Spanje so, en al die inwoners en allemaal wie sy levens jylle so beinvloed, baie sterk te toewens, vir die toekomst mag hierdie centrum ook een groot verskil maak, in baie mense sy levens, en hou vol met die goeie werk wat jylle doen, baie sterk te. Bye bye, thank you, Peter. We can now cut the ribbon. Peter, you you can do the honors. The amplike opening dan van the Yanni Muton La Visi Clinic. Yes, sir. Here we That was the cutting of the ribbon, and we're now going into the actual clinic itself. And Terry's just going to show us that video. That's in four different videos which have been spliced together. Uh, so well done, Terry, for your technical skills, and thanks for helping us out on that. Right, I'm handing over now to Suna, who will tell us more about the clinic. Good morning. Welcome in the Low Vision Clinic. As you can see, it looks beautiful, very clean, real medical environment, because that's what it is. So the idea is to, to be able to test all the students' eyes, because up to now, um, there was no help. Well, there were a little bit of low vision aids were available, but we need to really do the whole um, test before, before we can do this properly. So I'll see students for a extensive eye test it is um, typically what you'll see in a normal optometry practice all these all the equipment is brand new uh, state of the art one way to, to use it so once they've been through the normal eye test where i check whether they do perhaps need glasses where they perhaps they need to be referred back to see an ophthalmologist again uh, once that's done we will be moving over to the to the um, countertop here where we've got many different low vision aids or devices um, and They'll get an opportunity to look at the few options that I would recommend. It depends on their eye condition, how much magnification they might need. And often they need to spend time here and sit and, and try the different options. Often they come back a week later to perhaps um, just try with us again. We need to make sure they're holding the device at the right distance. We need to make sure that the light is optimal. There's a lot that we need to, to go through to make sure we, we're really helping them. Um, Yes, and also when it comes to, to training with the low vision aids, we'll, I'll have the, the rest of the REACT team assisting as well. So that is the idea, Golden and Marissa and Rashifa and Sandra have been spending time with me in this room to look at the different devices that we've got. Um, with, for the, the idea is that they, our students can then come and sit with anyone in the team to look at other options perhaps for, for their eyes. Okay, you chin down there. Right, so you just look straight ahead for me. Okay. No need to focus or to give me any feedback. It'll take an automatic measurement of your prescription. This is the biggest. Uh -huh. And you've got it nicely focused there. Mm. Very nice. Let's make it a bit smaller. So I'm taking you to newspaper size print. Focus 
still do that? Yeah, I can still read this. You can this. still do that, that's great. Mm. Put this on, see if it makes it better. No, it's more blurry. Blurry now. Mm. It's probably because it's a... It's a double, it's almost too much magnification yeah, now. Yeah, too much, yes. Okay, but if we um, take this down, does it seem blurry? Yeah, it makes it much bigger. Because remember... No, it doesn't make it blurry. Now it's nice, because we want to use the least amount of magnification. Because if I make it more magnified, you see, you're only seeing less words. Yes, I see less words. So yes. now it's it's actually trickier mm -hmm. to read a whole line because you only because see. Because now like, I have to bring yeah. it up. So if we go, so that I can get more exactly. words in. But then it's, but, it's out of focus. But then it's yeah. So if we <clears> jump back, you always want to use the lowest possible magnification because mm. then you have a bigger field. Yeah, but if I use the lowest magnification, it's then, almost too small. Then it's too but small. But with the glasses, I was hoping. Even with the glasses. It's tricky. Okay. Mm. Let's just compare it to this one. Okay, this one I think has got a lot less magnification. Just, just have a look and see. Yeah, I do. If I do this, yes, then I can so see. So it's a different story now. But yeah. then how many words can you see in one? Can you actually read the line? Okay. Um, this is right in its loveliest form. That's about how many words? Okay. Two, four, six, seven. Okay. okay. So it's definitely a lot more comfortable when we go to, to the ruby. Yeah. Keep trying there. Because, yes, that's, that's now the thing to weigh okay, up. And the smaller one, this finer print, uh -huh. it's how lovely do these bangs are now. So that's also about two, four, six. Yeah. Not bad. Let me just check the final one. Can I? Yes, of course. You want to go smaller? Fine. Sure. Oh, that's very small. Mm -mm. Too small. It's too small. Okay, that's fine. I, I'm very happy if you manage N10. That is, that is very small. Um, try with the ruby. Perhaps you can manage. Yeah. Now I think with the ruby. Here, yeah? Yes. You can okay. put the magnification up if you prefer. Okay. If I do this, then I can see a wide view over four countries. That's now Six. the line again. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's that's good. God. If you want to get a job at Cape Town Society of the Blind, you have to be good at chili, pretty much everything. So to the videographers, I'm sure you didn't see that in your CV. Um, and when you said we had to become experts in Zoom, I bet you didn't see that in your CV. But you know the part I love the most on that video is when she's using the, the device to read and she says, oh, that's perfect. Oh, that's perfect. Isn't that the line that we want to hear everybody say? So that's fantastic. 
A few short announcements. Uh, thank you very much again to the Office of uh, the National Development Agency. The Sechers, they sent out a press release this morning and there's been quite a lot of response. So it sounds like the Argus and the Times are going to be interested. Uh, there's also a radio station and definitely, I, I will definitely get small radio involved. Uh, so that's, that's all fantastic stuff. Uh, the good news is for those of you that couldn't see the whole video is we are in the process of doing a professional voiceover. And once we've done the voiceover, we will then post that online and that will be available again. And I'm sure, Lizelle, that won't take more than a few days. So hopefully we can get that up and going as well. Um, I haven't forgotten about the prize. For those of you that have just joined us, uh, we had a little bit of fun before we started. Uh, we sat and we enjoyed the Jerusalem, the song, and we were going to offer a prize to the person who danced the best. So, Lizelle, if you want to start thinking about that and telling us what that is. But before we do that, we're nearly at the end. If I could ask the Deputy CEO, and thank you, Judith, for all the work that you've done in putting this all together, if you could give us the, the vote of thanks. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you, Andre. As an innovative organization offering training and support to about 120 students annually, the natural next step was to add our rehabilitation service offering. Nizal had the vision to open a low vision clinic at CTSB where we could provide eye tests, assessments, and offer assistive devices to our students, SPUs, and staff. Just over two years later, we are happy to celebrate that vision, which has grown from an idea to a reality and continues to grow every time that vision is shared with someone new. Our enthusiastic and well-trained rehab team is ready to offer a full service assessment to our clients, starting with our students, SPUs, and staff, and then we'll open this up to our external clients. We hope that we can help you find the right assistive device for your needs. We would like to thank the following donors for making it possible for, for us to open the first phase of our clinic. The Yanni Matan Foundation, the National Development Agency, the Deichmann Trust, the Ralph Stefan Nussbaum Foundation, the Cohen Family Trust, and the Margot Picard Trust via the Rotary Club of Mal Postrand. That was sure, that was a mouthful. Your unwavering commitment to CTSB is truly inspiring. To our staff, students, SPUs, and our board, thank you so much for your patience, commitment, and support. To our MC Andre, your guidance in making today a reality has been amazing. Thank you for putting up with Lizelle and me. To our Zumo Steady, thank you for your expertise and for meeting with us on a weekly basis to make today a reality. We truly do appreciate all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. Now you see how much fun it is to be on the focus there all the time. So it's not much fun to be on the camera. Uh, by the way, I forgot another job requirement of being the CEO of Cape Town CSB is you've got to be a professional speaker as well nowadays, eh, Lizelle? Lizelle, what a wonderful presentation and what a beautiful morning. Um, I've, I've absolutely loved it and I knew what was coming. So I hope that the audience out there has enjoyed it. Uh, we've got a few more surprises. So firstly, Lizelle, what I want to ask you is, was there a dancer in the house today? And if you want to pick us a winner and then possibly just uh, tell us a little bit about what they're going to win. Yes, there was somebody who really caught my eye and she had such a nice swing and that was Lesehu. <laughs> yes, it was. She was fabulous. She was cool. She was very cool. <laughs> Lesehu is really behind the scenes and she's put so much of this morning together. So what's she going to win, Lesehu? I would like her to choose something. We can send her a few pictures of table linen that was hand woven by our blind weavers. Yeah. So, absolutely fantastic. Lesecha, congratulations. And I've got some good news for you. We are going to give everyone the opportunity again to see how well you can dance. Because on this night, I just want to say thank you to everyone around the world who's been here. Lesecha, do you want to say something? Just, I can see you dying to say something. Lesecha, just unmute yourself. Thank I, I, you. Very, 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 very much. I like the personal touch that it was handmade. It'll be very special to me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. 
Thanks. And let's say has been absolutely critical to us in getting some of the media contacts and making sure that Tama is here and everything there. So what we're going to do now is just to say thank you to absolutely everyone. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. We're trying to keep to under an hour. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to sign out. And what we're going to do this time, just so you can see everybody is here, if you can all turn your cameras on. And I think just as an appreciation of, of thanks to the Cape Town Society of the Blind and all the many donors, if we can express ourselves on the visual things, mm. and I think we'll play Jerusalem as a goodbye to all of you. And just to say thank you to everyone. It's a one, the wonderful project. And I don't know if you've got any last words. Thank you to everybody who was here today. Thank you for your incredible support. Your care shown for CTSB. Uh, we truly appreciate each and every one of you.